Okay, so in this video we are going to have a look at increasing and decreasing by a percentage. Now specifically we are going to look at using a multiplication method and how to use a multiplier for doing this. Obviously this can be done with and without a calculator but we are going to focus on more so using the calculator method but we will discuss how to do this without a calculator also. So, hope you enjoy this video, with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so this is our first question. Now it says here, increase 120 by 20%. Now very quickly before we look at our multiplier method, let's just get the answer without a calculator. So if we want to get this without a calculator, all that we actually have to do is follow our process for working out a percentage, and that is to obviously start by working out 10%. So work out 10%, which is 12, and for 20%, we can double that. So 20% would be 24, and then we're obviously increasing by a percentage, so we would increase by this 24, so we just add that on to the 120. So 120, add 24, and that comes out as 144. So we know the answer is 144, so for this type of question, why would we bother using a multiplier? Well, to be fair, for this type of question, we probably wouldn't. It probably could be quicker for us just to work it out without a calculator, but not all questions are going to be this simple and not all percentages are going to be as simple as 20%. So we need to have a method for if it's going to be a little bit trickier, surely there must be a faster way for us to do this with a calculator, and there is. So we're going to look at that 20% and we're going to figure out what we would actually multiply by to increase by 20% and therefore, you know, if it was 17% or 5%, what would we actually be able to multiply by? And it all comes down to thinking about that as a percentage more than the original. So the original amount that we have, we could think about as being 100%. And I'm going to draw it as a little bar. So we've got 100% and we are going to add on an extra 20%. So that's almost like we're extending the bar. We're making it 20% bigger. Now, if we think about that, what is that as an overall percentage? Well, we've got 100% and we've got 20% there, and overall that is 120%. And if we want to increase by 20% to get this 120%, we need to think about what 120% is written as, as a decimal. Well, 100% isn't actually written as a decimal, that would just be the number one. So the 100% would be written as the number one, but what would go after the one? So it'd be one point something. Well, thankfully, it just reads as it does just above. It's just it's 1.20. So that 0.20 there is the extra 20% on top of the 1, which is our 100%. So it's the extra 20% on top of the 100%. And that right there is the decimal that we would need to multiply by. We would just multiply by 1.20. Obviously, you don't need to put the 0 at the end, so you would just multiply by 1.2. And 1.2 is the decimal multiplier to increase by 20%. And if you get your calculator now, because we're obviously using a calculator method, and you type in 120 and you multiply it by 1.2, then you will get the 144. So let's type that in, 120, multiply it by 1.2, and in this instance we actually do get 144. So you can see it actually calculates that percentage increase for you. So obviously when we are using a calculator method we need to know a few things here. We need to know obviously how to turn the percentage into the decimal and obviously thinking about the fact that it has to be one point and then that increase in that decimal there. So another example that we could think about is let's say we were increasing by and let's go with 30%. So what would an increase of 30% be? Well, instead of being 1.2 or 1.20, instead it would be 1.30. And it just follows on this little pattern. So you don't have to write down the full 120% and draw the bars. All you have to know is that if you are increasing by a percentage, it's one point, and then whatever that percentage is afterwards. So in the case of 20, 1.20. In the case of 30, 1.30. And that's what we'll multiply by. But we're going to have a look at a few extra examples and hopefully you will spot the pattern as we start to go through them. So let's have a look at our next one. Okay, so this question says increase 250 by 35%. So if we're increasing by 35%, then obviously we're going to start with a one point number. So we're going to have one point and then for 35%, that would just be 
five. And that would increase for us by 35%. The one represents the 100%, the extra 0.35 represents the additional 35%. So that increases it by 35% for us. So into our calculators, we just need to type in 250 multiplied by 1.35. And if we type that in, that comes out as 337.5. And that right there is our final answer. There we go. Again, just thinking about the logic here, when you multiply something by one, it doesn't actually change, it just it just sticks as it is. So adding the extra 0.35 there, it's just adding on that additional 35% on top of the original number. So this method works very, very nicely, it's very, very quick, but you just need to be happy to convert back into the decimal there. And if you want to think about the logic behind it, 35% as a decimal is 0.35. Okay, but obviously we're changing it to 1.35 to incorporate the fact that we are going to increase it. So there we go, that's another process there. Let's just have a look at a final question before you have a go. Okay, so this one here is normally where people will make a mistake when it's a single digit percentage. And that's because, obviously, once you learn this method, you might start thinking that for 3% that you would write 1.3. But we already know that if we times by 1.3, that's actually 1.30. That's 30% 30 increase. So we have to be very, very careful. And in this case, when it's a single digit percentage, again, thinking about what it can be written as as a decimal is very helpful. And 3% as a decimal is 0.03, not 0.3. So when we are going to use our multiplier here, we're just going to change that 0 at the start to a 1. And we were going to times by 1.03. So being very careful here, because had you have gone for 1.3, that would increase it by 30% and not the 3% that we're looking for. So very, very important part of the question, this one, when we've got a single digit percentage, just making sure we are very, very careful with that multiplier there. So typing this in, 180, multiply that by 1.03, and that gives us a final answer of 185.4. And if you did pick the wrong multiplier and instead you had have multiplied it by 1.3, then you'd notice you'd get an answer of 234, which is a very, very big increase for just a small 3%. So you should be able to spot if you do make a mistake on this, but hopefully you're happy with that process, you're happy with converting 3% to a decimal as 0.03, and you're not going to accidentally make that mistake that so many people do make when doing these multipliers. So there we go, that is increasing by a percentage. Let's have a look at some questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's four questions. So pause the video there, have a go at these four, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first one then. So we're gonna times 90 by 1.3 to increase by 30%, and you get an answer of 117. And there's our first one. For the next one, we're gonna do 160, and we're gonna multiply that by 1.45. And if we times that by 1.45, we get the answer 232. And there we go, moving on to some of our single digits. So we've got 340, we're going to times this by 8%, so being very careful not to times it by an increase of 80%, so 0 0.08. And if we do 340 times 1.08, we get the answer 367.2. And here we go, on to our final question. Again, a single digit percentage, so 420 multiplied by 1.02, careful not to write 1.2, and 420 times 1.02 is equal to 428.4. And there we go, that's how you increase by a percentage. Hopefully you got all of those correct. We've got four answers there, so check all of those, and let's have a look at decreasing by a percentage. Okay, so when we decrease by a percentage. Now again, if you were gonna do this without a calculator, you'd follow a very similar process to what we talked about at the start. So if we work that out quickly so we can see what the answer is, and then we can check our method using the calculator process. So if we work out 10%, just working out 10% of 80, which is eight, we want double that for 20%. So 20% would be 16. And to decrease by that percentage, we would subtract it away from 80. So we would do 80, take away the 16 that it's decreasing by, and that would come out as 64. So we know our answer is going to be 64. Now let's have a look at applying our multiplier method. But again, obviously, if you had a non-calculator method, that's how you'd go about it. So again, if we think about 80 as our original 100%, but this time we're going to decrease it. So we're actually going to chop off 20% of that. 
So if this is 20% that we're going to decrease it by, and the overall amount was obviously 100%, what percentage is going to be left over? Well, 100% take away 20% would leave us with 80%. So the actual percentage that we're going to have is 80%. And if we're going to multiply to find out 80%, this time we're not going to multiply by a one point number, because obviously that would increase it, but we're going to multiply by a naught point number. And the naught point number that we're going to multiply by is the decimal version of what's left over. And we have 80% left over. So 80%, if we write that as a decimal, is 0.80, or 0.8, but I'll write it as 0.80. And that's the decimal that we're going to multiply by. So whereas before we added the 20% on, which would have been 1.20, and multiplied by that, this time we're taking the 20% off, which leaves us with 0.80. So that's all we're going to multiply by. So this is a bit of a strange one because it's 80 multiplied by 0 0.80. But if we do 80 times the 0 0.8 and work that out on a calculator, that gives us the answer 64. And there we go. We've got our match and we know that we've done the correct method. So our answer is 64 and our multiplier in this case was 0 0.8. So again, you've also figured out something else hopefully in this, and that is if you just want to work out a percentage of an amount by using a multiplier method, you can do it just like this. We've just seen that to work out 80%, we just times by 0 0.8. So although we're going to be using this for decreasing, you've also now got a method for working out percentages with a calculator. For example, if we wanted to work out 20% of a number, we could multiply by 0 0.2. If we wanted to work out something like 34% of a number, you could multiply by 0 0.34. Okay, so there we go. Another method that you can use for working out percentages of an amount. But let's have a look at another question before you have a go. Okay, so looking at a single digit percentage. Now we're going to decrease here by 4%. So if we want to know what percentage is left over, well, if we take away 4% from our original 100%, we would be left with 96%. So if we're going to decrease something by 4%, we actually are working on 96% of that number. And 96% as a decimal can be written as 0.96. So that is our multiplier that we're going to multiply by. So nice and easy, we get 240 on your calculator, multiply it by 0.96 and if we type that in 240 times 0.96 the answer comes out as 230.4 and there we go and that's our final answer so to work out a percentage decrease we figure out what percentage will be left over once that has been taken away and then multiply by that um, decimal version which we call a multiplier so there we go, that is how we're going to go about this, um, and here's a couple of questions for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's four questions here for you to have a go at, so pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers in just a sec. Okay, so for the first one then, we're going to do 60, and we're going to multiply it by what's left over when we take away 30%, which would be 70%, which would be 0 0.7. So 60 multiplied by 0 0.7 comes out as 42, and there's our first one. For the next one, we're going to do 180, and we're going to multiply it by whatever percentage is left over. When we take away 15%, that's 85%, so we would multiply it by 0.85. So 180 times 0.85 comes out as 153. And there we go. On to the next one. So 240, and if we take away 9%, that would leave us with 91%. So we times that by 0.91. So 240 times 0.91 comes out as 218.4. There we go, 218.4. And onto the last one, 320. And if we take away 3% from 100, that leaves us with 97%. So 320 times 0.97. And that gives us a final answer of 310.4. And there we go, there's our four answers. Make sure you've checked all of those. And that gives us the end of our questions. So that's how you increase and decrease by a percentage using a multiplier. And we also discussed obviously using a non-calculator method as well. And obviously the video on working out a percentage of an amount is gonna be very useful for you for that non-calculator method. So I hope, hope you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Don't forget to check out the rest of the videos in the fractions, decimals, and percentages series in the playlists. But 
I will see you on the next video.